What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for joining me for episode seven of the Instagram Q&A session. It is great to see you guys all here. Thanks again for joining me. As you guys probably know, some of you who have done it already, at noah.cavanaugh, Monday mornings, early morning Pacific Standard Time. That's when I post my story, uh, the Q&A in the story, and then I answer a 10 second blurb in that story on Mondays or Tuesdays, depending on when I can get to them. And then of course I take all those questions and answer them long form for you guys here on YouTube. Gives you guys more value, gives you guys more of an idea of the way that I think about football, the way that I think about the world, and of course all the things that have to do with your questions. So let's hop straight into the video. Question number one, best prehab exercises. That completely depends on what types of injuries you've had, depends on your medical history, depends on your current flexibility, health, all that stuff. So I don't know if I can give you a direct answer. My best, my best possible like all around thing would to be get would to be get some bands and do some activation exercises for your hip flexors, your glutes, your IT bands, all that stuff. Um, your calves, just make sure you're properly warmed up. I think a proper warm up is the best form of prehab. That being said, again, consult a medical professional for the best for you for prehab exercises. I do a whole series of them, including opening up my hips and some Achilles exercises and some groin exercises and stuff that have been very helpful in my career, but those are based on my injuries in the past and based on uh, deficiencies that I've had in my body in the past. So definitely cater it to your own system and your own body. Question number two, how to strengthen the knee? Again, it depends on your injuries. I know this is sort of a cop-out answer, but I think it's really important to understand what types of exercises you need for uh, the types of injuries you've had. If you haven't had any injuries and you're just looking to strengthen the knee, I think backwards running is really good. If you go on Instagram, the knees over toes guy is a really cool system that's really helped in some ways for me. Uh, walking up hills backwards, walking on a treadmill backwards, really getting those muscles uh, in the quad and in the, the muscle that's like kind of right here, uh, really engaged and really ready to go can be fantastic. Knee circles are a good thing, knee figure eights, just make sure you have good form. You can look those up on the internet, you, YouTube, I'm sure they have, uh, there's lots of videos on those. And then of course doing good compound lifting movements with good form, really strengthening those knees, making sure that your quads, your hamstrings, all the muscles that connect into your knee are super strong and flexible as well. So those are things that I would recommend on a more general scale, but consult a PT, a physio, a doctor, whoever you have access to, a personal trainer might know better than me, will probably know better than me about what are the best knee strengthening exercises you can do. Question number three, can you be successful with no money? Yes, it depends on what context you're asking. If you're asking in real life, yeah. If you're asking with football, also yeah. I think it just depends on how hard you're willing to work, how hard you're willing to fight for what your dreams and visions are and you need to go about it with positivity, relentlessness, and that good crazy energy, which Danny Alves, my favorite player, talks about all the time, and it's something that I firmly believe in, and making sure you really structure out what your priorities are in life. So if you don't have any money to do anything, but you have the ability to make a connection or to maybe work for, I don't know, work for somebody, work for your parents, or work for a community member who can pay you a little money so you can go on trial, or you can get a video of yourself playing, or you can buy a phone so that you can, you know, go and film yourself. Like, w there are so many different ways. This world is an abundant place, and it's just a matter of finding the little things that you can do to either make money to get you where you need to go, or connect with the people who you can do. So, you, whether if you can go online and borrow a computer or you have a computer already, you go on LinkedIn and you take a bunch of video of yourself playing, including games and stuff, you get connected and then you can become really successful that way. Obviously, nothing happens if you don't put the physical work in. I'm speaking just from a football standpoint and this is more, this is relative to life too, but if you don't put in the work and you're not willing to grind, even if you don't have money to spend or money to save even, I would, you gotta be able to do the work, otherwise nothing else 
happens, right? So you gotta be able to do the work and you gotta be able to grind and be really, really smart with your money decisions. Question number four, current left back and why? Alfonso Davies is very fun to watch. Jordi Alba is always, a, he's always a class act. He's a very good player. Mm. Who's Liverpool's? Robertson, yeah, Andy Robertson. Andy Robertson's really good. There's a lot of good left backs. I think for me, I play most similarly to Jordi Alba probably. Um, or actually more like a Marcos Alonso, kind of like a wing back almost. Um, although I fancy myself like a, a better runner than Marcos Alonso in the sense that like obviously he's in Chelsea, he's one of the best players in the world, but like as far as relative fitness and like running up and down level from him compared to his players and me compared to my players, I'd say that I'm more of like a athletic up and down version. So more like a Jordi Alba or an Alfonso Davies. Alfonso Davies is fun to watch because he's so fast and he's so technically gifted like a winger. Um, so that's, yeah, those are, those are kind of my three, the three guys that I watch probably the most, like I'll watch Liverpool games, even though I'm not like a diehard fan of Liverpool to watch Andy Robertson, just because he's that good. Same with the other two as well. So yeah, those are my three. I'd say those are my three favorite right now. Favorite boot from each brand right now. Oh, that is a good question. Okay. And this is, uh, this is purely based on what I've tried on so far. X speed flow from Adidas. Phantom GT from Nike, Mizuno Rebula Cup. Although I know a lot of people will argue that the Neo 3 Beta is way better, and I'm sure it is. I just have not tried it on. So again, Rebula Cup from Mizuno. Mm, from my foot, Future Z 1.2 from Puma. What other brands am I forgetting? Hmm. Nike, Adidas, Puma, Mizuno, Diodora, haven't tried any on, of those on in a long time, so I don't know. Pentafolo Doro, I don't know anything about those boots. Um, that, I think, is it. If I'm forgetting any, leave them down in the comments below. But yeah, those are my, those are my four or five favorite boots that are current generations. I have boots that I like way more than those current gen that have been in the past, but those are my current ones. Can you play CDM, center defensive mid, if you're not that skillful and only use physicality and speed? Uh, I mean, I guess, but a CDM has to be kind of a, the machine of the team. And it depends on what formation you're playing. So if your speed, like I think if you're just super fast and super physical, I don't think center defensive mid is the position for you. Like as a coach, I wouldn't put you there. I think if you're, you've got to be skillful to play a six. Like, it, there's no way around it. I think being a bruiser is fine. Like, you've got players who are like that. I've played with players like that. But they don't make very good sixes because a good six should be able to pull strings and also be able to tackle and do the defensive dirty work. Short answer, no. Long answer, I just explained. It's more complicated than that. I would just hope that you would be skillful or you would train your skills a bunch so that you could work on your distribution. Because again, you look at some of the best center defensive mids on the planet right now, and they're not actually that athletic for the most part, but they're incredible ball players. Rodri, Casemiro, Busquets is number one for me, bar none. He's the, he's the best six debatably ever. Mm, yeah. Tiago, right? So yeah, he's kind of fast and he's kind of physical, but he's more super, super physical up here, right? So he's really good with his game smarts. Things to think about. Question seven, most important qualities in a fullback? Great question. So most important qualities I would say is you've got to be able to hit really good passes. So your passing has to be excellent. Your first touch has to be excellent. Your Defense has to be excellent. Your one-on-one -on -one defending has to be excellent. And your ability to go up and down the field, your fitness and the way that you move within a team 
has to be excellent. Question eight, any tips on treating constant lower back pain? That's funny because I just actually had like a lower back injury. It's not fun, but I would say get a scan if you can, get an MRI, see a doctor, see what they say. Um, for If you have constant lower back pain, like I can't answer that question because I don't have constant lower back pain. I have sort of fluctuating back pain that happens every once in a while. Uh, but again, you gotta like talk to a doctor because they'll know way more about it than I will. And yeah, maybe, maybe yoga could help a lot. And just good plyometric exercises. So bird dogs and other things for your cat, for your, for your cat, for your back would be, would be good. I'd start there and then look at getting to see a doctor and getting some scans because if you have constant back pain and it's like nerve pain then that might suggest a bigger structural issue in your back or your hips question nine can an mls or usl team sign a collegiate player on their own terms instead of drafting them absolutely yeah players get signed all the time from collegiate programs so i think it's just a matter of who you know what connections you have, how good you're doing in that season, how good of a player you are, what your attitude is, and all the rest, right? So player, MLS and USL clubs can sign people from wherever the hell they want. It's just a matter of whether you're in the right place at the right time, you've got the skill set that that particular coach wants, you fit into their style of play, you've got the attitude, the skill level, all that stuff, right? So that's what I'd say. So yes, short answer, yes. Last question, I have, uh, Periostitis, I can't pronounce that, P-E-R-I-O-S-T-I-T-I-S. -I 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 and I'm rehabbing intensely, but with pain. Should I take painkillers? I am not a doctor, and so I don't feel comfortable answering that question because I don't know your situation, I don't know if you're allergic to anything, and like I don't know this individual at all, so I am gonna pass on this question, but I wanted to bring it up because I am not a doctor. For those of you who know me and who don't know me, I'm not a doctor. I am a professional player. Yes, I graduated from school, but it was with a psychology degree, not a medicine degree. So I'm not a trainer. I'm not certified in any of that. So I don't feel comfortable answering that question. I don't know for your situation. So sorry about that. Hopefully your, uh, your situation improves and that you don't have as much pain and you can go back to playing football again. That's it for the video guys. Thanks so much for joining me again. Hit that subscribe button if you're getting value from these Instagram Q and A's. Like the video if you got value from it as well. As always, be awesome, take care. I'll see you guys in the next video.